June 26, 1988, Habsheim, France. Cameras are rolling. A crowd of thousands gathers at a small airfield. This isn't just another day at the airport. It's a show, a public demonstration meant to impress. Airbus is here to unveil the future of aviation. The brand new A320, a sleek, quiet, and revolutionary aircraft. The first commercial jet designed to fly entirely through computer-controlled fly-by-wire systems. And today's flight is a chance to prove what it can do. On board are 130 people, including many journalists, aviation enthusiasts, and families who won seats through a promotional raffle. The plan is simple, a short flight from Basel to Habsheim, ending with a low, slow flyby over the runway, giving a perfect photo opportunity. The engines power up, the aircraft begins its takeoff roll. A moment later, the A320 lifts into the sky, climbing smoothly and effortlessly. Less than two minutes after takeoff, Habsheim airfield comes into view. The crew lowers the landing gear, sets the flaps, and begins their descent. The goal is to do a flyover at just 100 feet above the ground, but something isn't right. The nose begins to dip, and the aircraft keeps descending. The descent continues, past 80 feet, then 60, then 40. The crowd watches, unsure if this is part of the show or something else. The Airbus A320 drops toward the tree line, possibly low and slow. Captain Michel Asseline, with over 10,000 flight hours, is at the controls. He's practiced this exact maneuver dozens of times in the simulator, but this time, something is terribly wrong. The aircraft clips the forest canopy and cartwheels into the trees. Three people die. The world watches in horror as Europe's answer to Boeing's dominance literally crashes and burns on live television. Boeing executives watching from Seattle must have felt a moment of grim satisfaction. Order cancellations were inevitable. The European experiment was over before it started. American Airlines Purchasing Department was already drafting memos recommending they stick with proven Boeing technology. But then the investigators started sifting through the wreckage, and what they found changed everything. Today, more Americans fly on European-built aircraft than Boeing jets. The company that built the plane that crashed in front of those cameras now controls the future of aviation. And most passengers boarding flights from Miami to Seattle have no idea it happened. This is the story of how a seven inch difference changed everything. To understand how that crash changed aviation forever, you need to meet the man in the cockpit that day. Captain Michel Asseline had 10,463 flight hours. He'd flown through thunderstorms over the Atlantic, navigated instrument approaches in zero visibility, and handled emergencies that would terrify most pilots. When Airbus needed someone to demonstrate their revolutionary new aircraft to the world, they chose him. As the A320 descended toward the tree line, something went wrong. The aircraft was too low, too slow, with no energy left to recover. In any conventional Boeing, that meant physics would take over. But the A320's computers detected the impossible flight parameters and fought back. The fly-by-wire system automatically pitched up, added power, tried everything in its digital arsenal to save an unsavable situation. It failed to prevent the crash, but it prevented something far worse. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. The real battle wasn't being fought in cockpits or engineering departments. It was happening in airline boardrooms, where a quiet revolution was about to unfold. The first clue came from Southwest Airlines Purchasing Department. When Southwest bought aircraft, they weren't just buying a way to move people from Dallas to Phoenix. They were buying training programs costing millions of dollars, maintenance schedules that determined how often planes sat idle, making zero money, parts inventory taking up expensive hangar space. Southwest had cracked the code early, going all in on the 737 and saving fortunes by having pilots who could jump between any plane in their fleet with zero additional training. Boeing's approach was traditional. The 737-700, 737-800, and 737-900 each required separate training courses, separate certification processes, separate type ratings. Meanwhile, at Airbus headquarters in Toulouse, engineers were making an almost impossibly ambitious promise to airlines from Air France to British Airways. They'd build three different aircraft, the A319, A320, and A321. That would feel completely identical to pilots. Same flight deck layout, same procedures, same type rating. A pilot trained on one could fly all three with maybe a day of differences training. The math was staggering. Lufthansa alone employs over 9,000 pilots. Air France has 8,000. British Airways employs 6,000. 
And when you add US airlines like Delta with their 15,000 pilots, American Airlines with 16,000, and United with 13,000, Airbus had just made airline operations fundamentally cheaper by hundreds of millions of dollars annually. The third clue was hiding in plain sight, and it was brilliant. Marketing teams from American Airlines to British Airways were baffled. The meal service was identical. Same movie selection, same flight attendants. What could possibly account for the difference? Then someone in Airbus's cabin design team in Hamburg revealed the secret. 7. Inches The A320 cabin is exactly 7 inches wider than a 737. 7 inches doesn't sound like much until you realize what it actually means at 35,000 feet. You're not quite so aware of the businessman hogging the armrest. Flight attendants can move down the aisle without that awkward shuffle with the drink cart. Overhead bins are just a little more forgiving when you're cramming your carry-on after a tight connection in Charles de Gaulle or Heathrow. Passengers from Chicago to Miami and from Paris to Rome were rating flights higher and had no conscious idea why. While Boeing was obsessing over fuel efficiency improvements measured in tenths of a percent, Airbus had discovered something far more valuable subconscious customer satisfaction. The final piece of evidence came from the order books themselves, and the pattern was unmistakable. The numbers today tell the whole story. In the last decade alone, Airbus racked up orders for nearly 9,000 aircraft, while Boeing managed about 5,000 net orders for the 737 MAX. That's not competition anymore, that's market domination. The Airbus A320 is now literally weeks away from overtaking the Boeing 737 as the world's most popular airliner. Boeing has delivered about 12,175 aircraft in the 737 family. Airbus, 12,155. We're talking about a gap of just 20 aircraft. But here's the remarkable part of this conquest. Most passengers flying from Orlando to Newark still have absolutely no clue which plane they're boarding. The A320's victory is almost entirely invisible. No Time magazine covers, no dramatic headlines about European conquest of American skies. Just millions of Americans getting where they're going a little more comfortably, while airlines run their operations a little more efficiently. The irony is profound. The A320 succeeded by being boring. In an industry that worships pushing boundaries, supersonic flight, space tourism, electric aircraft, the winning move turned out to be making Tuesday morning flights from Chicago to Phoenix more predictable, more standardized, more normal. Boeing had every advantage imaginable. Decades of dominance on American routes, deep relationships with airlines from United to Southwest, manufacturing expertise dating back to World War II bombers, the prestige of Seattle Aerospace Engineering. They lost not because they built bad airplanes, but because they got comfortable while Airbus obsessed over details that seemed trivial but weren't. Captain Michel Asseline's crash in those French woods had revealed something profound. The future didn't belong to pilots wrestling with physics or engineers chasing marginal improvements. It belonged to whoever understood that aviation is ultimately about people, the passengers in the back and the accountants in airline headquarters. Today, the A320 family carries more American passengers every year than any other aircraft type. Airbus production slots are booked solid through 2030. Airlines are placing orders today for planes that'll be flying routes from Seattle to Miami in the next decade. This might be the greatest peaceful industrial victory in modern history. European countries that spent centuries fighting each other created a consortium that fundamentally changed how Americans travel from coast to coast. And it happened because some engineers in Toulouse understood something Boeing didn't. The future belongs to whoever makes everyone's Tuesday morning flight just a little bit better. The era of American dominance in commercial aviation is over. It didn't end with a crash or scandal or dramatic corporate meltdown. It ended with better math, smarter psychology, and seven inches of extra elbow room at 35,000 feet.